Hey everyone, picture this. One ship, two vastly different experiences. On one side, a dreamlike transatlantic journey where most every experience on the Valiant Lady was fun, energetic, and amazing. And on the other, a Caribbean adventure that didn't quite hit the mark for us. Welcome to my Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady cruise ship review, where we did two back-to-back -back cruises. Whether you'll love or hate the ship might just depend on which side of the ocean you're on. Let's find out why. Let's start with our general observations of the Valiant Lady. Number one, there are no kids anywhere. We were worried that although the ship has no children, we figured that it would be packed full of 20-year-old people just partying all the time. On our transatlantic cruise, this was definitely not the case. I would say that the actual average age on this ship would have been around the mid-50s on the transatlantic and perhaps in the early 40s for the Caribbean seven-day cruise. Either way, we really did feel right at home and fit right into the environment. Number two, the entire ship staff all seemed truly happy and interested in the passengers and their job. The staff gets to be part of the passengers. For example, they get to eat in the same areas, they get to dance, drink, interact, and it's obvious that they are encouraged to make sure that the passengers are having a nice time. But it is also because the staff is very happy as well. Number three, the ship has a constant cool vibe to it, and whether it's because of an inclusive evening show or you're walking through an empty area of the ship alone, there is chill music throughout, and it sets the tone for everything. Number four, during the 14-day transatlantic, the ship never, ever felt crowded. We always felt that there was somewhere to sit and that the entire ship of passengers and crew seemed to respect everyone's space. People were always very polite. For example, people would hold doors open for one another in the elevators. And when people would talk with you, you could actually see they were listening to what you were saying. In other words, nobody ever seemed rushed. On the other hand, the seven day Caribbean cruise was different. There were a lot of people packed together. It was very difficult to find places to sit and it felt extremely crowded everywhere we went more people would look out for themselves and not be as respectful for other people's space. The passengers just seem different. For example, we would say hello in the elevator to people and they would actually just ignore you. Number five, Virgin Cruises will not nickel and dime you for anything. We had actually received free drinks for participating in some activities and we played a few games which gave us a few bonuses and we always found that there was a special for the next voyage that you can actually combine with other deals that you would find on the ship. So we did find our voyage to be very generous in prizes, giving random tokens of appreciation, free drinks, and more. In addition to this, we experienced a bar credit, free gratuities, free Wi-Fi, and we didn't have to spend money on anything, and we didn't end up with an additional bill at the end of our cruise either. Number six, there's a great selection of vegan choices in all of the restaurants. The food isn't your typical same old, same old either. The food experience is pretty incredible and it does change from week to week. In fact, there is no real buffet. Most of the food is in a restaurant style setting or takeout style, which was all very convenient in all cases. And number seven, the customer service department is the best we have experienced on any cruise line thus far. And we've been on 10 different cruise lines up until now. They are always asking you about your experience. They follow up with you, they listen, and they solve your issues immediately. For us, we think that this is where Virgin Valiant Lady really shined. Embarkation. Embarkation day was pretty much a disaster in our eyes, and we've been on a few other cruise lines at the same Barcelona terminal, and the other embarkations went so much smoother. 
So when you travel with Virgin, you're assigned to an embarkation time. Don't even bother trying to come outside of your time or you will be turned away and forced to wait somewhere else. At least that is what had happened to us when we were in Barcelona. When we arrived at the terminal, the lines were incredibly long and it was apparent that a lot of people didn't follow the rules uh, looking at their scheduled embarkation time. What resulted was a huge clump of people just standing and sitting around everywhere that one couldn't even see where to go. There was a long line just for dropping off your bags and then you had to join another longer line to get into the embarkation terminal and then a third line to get checked in. Virgin does not give you luggage tags or anything, so they make the process a long one and someone literally hand writes out your luggage tag while you're in line, dropping it off. Back to back cruises. Because we were on back to back cruises, we had to disembark and re-embark just to go through customs. Normally, the entire process is about 15 minutes in total. However, the Virgin Valiant Lady Cruise managed to make this a three hour process. On other cruise lines, we would normally go through the customs process and then go back onto the ship and enjoy an hour or two of having the ship basically to ourselves. Sadly, when we re-embarked, everything on the ship was still closed, so we weren't able to sit in the hot tub or even do anything exciting before the next group of passengers were able to embark. Disembarkation was also um, something. <laughs> we expected that the process of disembarking would be fairly quick, but it wasn't. We tried to leave the ship at 9.30 a.m. and we ended up in a line that took us until 11 a.m. Again, in comparison to other cruise lines, this is the biggest weak spot where we could see with Virgin Voyages. Once we finally did get off the ship, we were happy to see that our luggage was organized by floor numbers. So it was really easy for us to spot and exit the terminal quite quickly. As soon as we exited, we then called an Uber, which literally took two minutes to get there, even among all of the thousands of people still entering and exiting the cruise terminal. It was pretty efficient to just get out of the terminal with the Uber. Stateroom on the Valiant Lady. So the stateroom that we were in is pretty spacious and bright. It has a queen size bed that converts into a sofa should you wish to have it set up that way. Unfortunately, there is only one service in the room per day. So the attendant doesn't change the room from a living room to a bedroom anymore unless you specifically ask them to do so. And we didn't because we didn't want to end up sleeping on a living room couch at the end of the day. We also had a balcony and the balcony had two chairs, a table and a standard red hammock. And the balcony is all glass so that you can see right out and have nothing infringe your view. It's a standard size and quite comfortable. And on our transatlantic, there were very few people hanging out on the balcony, so it would never got loud or annoying as it could be in some cases, but it was the exact opposite experience for our Caribbean cruise. We had to actually change rooms in the middle of our voyage because our neighbors loved to party and they invited people over and they played their music and it was loud in our neighbor's cabin day and night. Uh, almost every balcony has a red hammock, and this is a huge highlight. We both spent a lot of time taking turns relaxing in the hammock, and we did both wish, however, that there were two hammocks and not just one. And the vegan food on the ship is really quite amazing. There are so many different venues around the ship to get great vegan choices at any time of the day. We spent time in places such as Razzle Dazzle, Gumbai, the Test Kitchen, Extra Virgin, and the Galley Kitchen. Every single restaurant on the Valiant Lady 
has something vegan to eat. What we did learn very quickly is that you have to ask for them to be creative or really examine the menus to see if they can combine different foods to make something delicious to eat. For example, we went to the Extra Virgin restaurant, which does not have a vegan menu, but we combined the sides from all of their menu choices and ending, ended up with so much delicious food, including spinach, leeks, potatoes, broccoli, mushrooms, pasta, it was amazing. You would also find that the OPA hour offered at the deck in the afternoon offers many vegan options that are not on any menu, such as falafel, hummus, and cauliflower quinoa. And at the salad bar, they have tofu. You just have to know to ask for it as you will not see it on the menu. The point is that you have to ask. You have to think outside of the box. We've been very happy to eat fresh food for the entire three weeks that we were on the Virgin Valiant ship. And the entertainment was unlike any ship that we've ever been on. It was just so fun. The first show that we experienced is called the Untitled Dance Party thing. And wow, that really did set the tone for the rest of the cruise. We experienced a variety of diva shows, hostess shows, mag magic shows, dance parties, we also attended Scarlet Night Party, PJ Party, Trivia, Games, Bingo, and so much more. This ship is literally packed with so many things to do. You can participate or not, and there are no shortages of things to do on this ship. We never experienced any kind of crowd in any of the venues. We never felt squished together, and for the most part, we were very comfortable on the ship during the transatlantic. In summary of the Virgin Valiant Lady, well, we had experienced so many surprises throughout our two trips on this ship, and we don't want to ruin any of the surprises for you, but all I can say is that overall, we love Virgin Voyages, and in particular, we loved the longer transatlantic voyage and couldn't be happier with the experience that we had on the ship. In my opinion, the transatlantic cruise was worth every single cent that we paid and much more.